Hello and welcome to ADFS preview and strategy show for the 2022 3 0 Open. My name is Eric and here at Sweet Spot DFS. It's all about trying to hit the optimal lineup every single week. Now, since this is a preview and strategy video, what, I'd I, what I would normally say to you guys is in the preview, we try to target the stats that are going to matter when building our lineups this week. Well, we're including the strategy video into that, so we're basically doing a whole comprehensive video all in one. Now, the reason I didn't do a preview video yesterday is because I got some respiratory issue, some illness, I don't know what it is, caused me to lose my voice over the weekend. Didn't really have much of a voice yesterday, don't really have one today, but you know, since it's Tuesday, it's gonna be too late if I try to do a video tomorrow. So hopefully you guys can bear with me. I'll go through the whole sweet spot process. We'll go over the golf course, the tournament information, the buckets, including the anchor buckets, and then build some lineups with the optimizer at the end of this video. But before we get into any of that, just a reminder, giveaways. Now, since we didn't reach the goal of 450 subscribers by the Open Championship, I'm reducing it from $30 down, $30 down to $20. I'm gonna do this until I hit $10, or the goal is met. So the goal is 450 subscribers. And if you want an entry into this giveaway, you gotta be subscribed, and you gotta comment down below. The reason I call this a, subs a subscriber giveaway is because I want to reward you guys for participating on this channel and helping me reach my goals. That's the reason for giving the money away. Again, 450 subscribers is this week's goal. Obviously, if we don't hit it this week, I'm going to rerun it next week and it'll be worth $10 and I'm giving that $10 away regardless. So if you want an entry, I mean, if we, by the way, if we don't run the giveaway at the end of this week, your entries from this week will go into next week's entries. And same applies for the week before and the week before that. So if you've been participating on this channel, you're not going to get punished for it. I'm going to continue to add all your entries together until I run this, and then boom. It'll all be worth, I mean, you'll have all those entries from, what, four weeks ago or something like that added into it. So you just it increases your chances of winning. Again, it's my way of rewarding you guys for participating. So again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and if you want an entry into this comment down below give me your favorite 8k and above golfer this week that you're going to build your lineups around and then you're in an entry to this another one that i'm running is more of a rebate if you sign up using the promo code sweet spot on prize picks that is i'm going to give you 20 bucks as long as you put an initial deposit of 20 dollars into it so if you do that i'm going to give you your 20 dollars back you can put it up to a hundred bucks and prize picks will match your deposit. So your 100 turns into 200 and it, after all the uh, dust settles, it'll only cost you 80 bucks. So it's up to you guys. I'm still giving you $20 for using the promo code sweet spot. There's a link in the description below that'll get you that sign up page. And beautiful part about that, you don't even have to type in sweet spot in the promo code. It'll already do it for you. So highly, highly encourage you guys to do that. These other pieces aren't really giveaways I, I suppose the optimizer is but the very first thing we're going to talk about is the cheat sheet this is available to you guys there's a link in the description that will get you to this this spreadsheet it has two tabs down here the dream sheet and the bucket system when I go through this video you can follow along with me but first what you have to do is go up to the file menu and make a copy because if you don't you're only gonna have read access to it you make a copy you'll be able to use the filters that I have so I have a DraftKings filter on the dream sheet and on the bucket system I have a bucket system filter I use these throughout the video so if you want to follow along with me obviously check out that link in the description once you're there go to file make a copy simple as that and then the last piece the optimizer I am providing or I'm giving this away as long as you're subscribed to the channel, you comment down below and you email me right there, sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. Let me know you're interested in the optimizer and I will send it your way. Those are all the giveaways this week. And again, I will be showcasing this optimizer at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and get into this thing and start with the tournament information. So it's the 3M Open. This is in Minnesota where I live. I mean, this tournament was kind of close to where I was living prior to my recent move. Blaine, Minnesota is just a northern suburb of the Twin Cities. 
Uh, this tournament was established in 2019, so it's fairly new. We have three years of course history, basically. 156 players for the field size. Cut is top, top 65 in ties. Your average winning score is minus 18. I think minus 21, minus 18, and minus... Oh, no. Minus 21, minus 19, and minus 15 were your winning scores the last three years. So that averages out close to 18 under. And same applies with your cut score. Minus 2. Uh, two years it had minus 2. One year it had minus 3 as your cut score. So... I just put it at minus 2 uh, as opposed to minus 2.3. Very weak strength of field. Currently, it's at 116. Um, this is, yeah, it's pitiful just to keep it short. Um, weather, it's going to be warm. This is very warm for us Minnesotans. Um, I'm sure the humidity is going to be pretty high in the cities. It's, it's just a, a very, very warm week. So the ball will be flying pretty decently. I'm, a, I'm assuming a lot of these golfers aren't going to have an issue with it because they are from different parts of the country, not from Minnesota. So, uh, yeah, it's it's warm weather. Looks like Thursday, Friday at least won't have rain attached to it, but this is Minnesota. Anything can happen at any day. So, And I know that's just weather in general, but Minnesota seems to be a little bit more volatile than that. Um, wind, 10 to 20 on Thursday, 5 to 10 on Friday, so it doesn't seem to be a weather advantage one way or the other. Golf course, TPC Twin Cities. It's been here for the last three years. Uh, the tournament, I mean, this tournament has hosted the 3M Championship Forever, which was a senior tour event, but obviously this being a PGA Tour event, three years so far. So you could use Arnold Palmer architecture, any of those golf courses. He's architect or has been an architect before. As, as data points if you want to use that in your research uh, process, but I don't think it's really going to matter that much. R71, 7,400 yards, and pretty much bent grass throughout. The rough is bluegrass fescue. That isn't, it's nothing really to concern yourself about. Just look at your bent grass putting splits, and then obviously bent grass approach and around the green. Um, even, even if it's bluegrass and fescue in the rough, you can just look at bent grass stats. It'll be just fine. So that is basically your tournament information and course information recap. Now, I just realized I usually do a review of the past tournament just to show you how the sweet spot process did. I will say this. It didn't work out as well. I think there was 31 out of 36 buckets that hit. So there was five that actually missed. Um, and very, very odd ones. So it being the Open Championship... And the Genesis Scottish Open being the tournament right before it might have something to do with it just because you have a bunch of European events that usually have happened prior to. And if you remember the bucket system, always, um, well, when you're looking at like last week finishing positions, it's usually using the same golf courses with the Genesis Scottish Open not being a different golf course but it being a pj tour event means more golfers in the open championship played in the scottish open so there had something to do with that um but either way we did have two golfers in the marquee tee times that were in the optimal lineup we'll obviously go over that uh coming up here and what else i think those are the main points the bucket system 31 of 35 buckets hit at the open uh marquee tee times we did have two that were in the optimal lineup uh, and usually that's what we're looking for so I think we can just move on and not do a review if you if you would like a review just let me know in the comment section below I can go ahead and, and post some things on on Twitter just so you guys can see them um, that way you guys aren't you know blind or in the dark I guess about that stuff but those are the two main points so we're gonna move on um let's start with usually what i would do is i'd go to the buckets from here we might as well just start with the sweet spot ranks go into the marquee tee times and then go into the buckets including the anchor buckets so let's let's go ahead and do that so we'll throw the display up on or the the spreadsheet up here you guys again can follow along with me with the the link in the description for the cheat sheet again make a copy that way we can go through this together um i do have the golfers that are out still on the spreadsheet and that's just easier for me to copy and paste from my master template um 
it just has made my life so much faster or so much easier with how quick it is to copy and paste. So it's going to be on the cheat sheet as well. I went over to the sweet spot ranks and I basically went all the way down to out and I excluded them. So it usually is checked. I'm just going to uncheck that. That way we don't see them. But if we're looking at the sweet spot ranks, um, what I want you guys to actually pay attention to is this price tag here, $7,800 is the last price you can see on my screen uh, on the first page. You know, I can scroll down and I can show you all the rest of the, the salaries. But on the first page, $7,800 is the lowest salary. So when I go ahead and sort this from top to bottom, anyone that's under $7,800 is going to be a value in this field based off of my rankings. And just to show you how those rankings are compiled, it's usually the same um, stat model that I typically go through, OWGR. It's just a good way to figure out who's been playing well over the last year, not last two years. Uh, the cream rises to the top, and I'm gonna, I want to um, reward or benefit our top-ranked golfers Regardless if they're on a slide right now or if they're on the uptick, I want that to be accurately reflected in the OWGR. I do have grass stats here. We're looking at bent um, averages back to 2013, their top 10 uh, success rate, essentially, and then basically their bent grass stats from a full year, one full year. I do weight this down 50%, so usually I'd say I want 100 to be the highest score in the field uh, for a certain stat, but we're gonna divide that in half and that ends up being 50s being the top score. So if you see 50 in any of these stats, that is the top score, which I don't think we do, um, and that's fine. Don't mind grass stat two, everyone has the same stats. I don't, I'm not using a grass stat two. Uh, we're looking at course history, some season long stats here, bogey avoidance, pretty or better, driving distance. Driving distance is just your highest potential that a golfer can really have, in my opinion. Recent form stats, we're looking at DraftKings points, um, their average finishing position, and their scoring average, their round by round scoring average. I also weight this down 50%, and this is all within the last seven weeks. So that's what recent form is to me. Uh, I also have some season long stats here, DraftKings points, um, their round to round scoring average, round under 70%, cut made percentage, and DK top 10 percentage. Now, this one will show the top golfer in the field at 100 points. So, obviously, my top guy is Hideki Matsuyama. He's going to be the highest um, scoring guy here uh, in the field for DK top 10 points. You don't have to worry about this out. This is just for me to, uh, because I do include those golfers that are out i'm actually handicapping their points so i'm bringing them down so they're not being reflective in the rankings anyways this all scores uh this all put, gets put into a score then i rank that so that's how all my rankings work so if you're on that spreadsheet that you're not confused by how i scored this so like i said seventy eight hundred dollars was the top or was the lowest uh price on page one and we have a few golfers that actually make their way into the first page. Um, obviously, the first one being, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but Adam Svensson, who's going to be very, very popular this week. $7,600. He's my 11th ranked guy. Followed by Tom Hoagie, my 13th ranked guy at $7,100. CT Pan is at $75. Matthias Schwab is at $72. Tom Kim, who is uh, Jung Hun Kim. So I think a lot of you guys, when you're looking this up on other stat, stat sites, are just going to have his full name. This is going to change over time to Tom Kim. So I have it as Tom Kim in my database. It's Ju Hung or Jung Hoon. I think that's how it is. Jung Hoon Kim. Uh, and then Brendan Todd is my last guy. Those are all the golfers under $7,800. So these, in my opinion, are values in this field. Uh, all your 10k golfers, which there are only three, they're all up here, but it's Matsuyama over Finau, and then Sungjae is number three. So it is accurate rankings based off of DraftKings. I, I do like that. I don't see any 9ks that are really out of, uh, I mean, like, we have four 9k golfers this week, and they are all at the top here. 
with the exception of Cameron Tringali kind of wedging himself in between Maverick McNeely and Davis Riley, Saeed Tagala. So Davis Riley, pretty good value. And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be going to him as well as Svensson, as well as Steele. And hey, I, it, it all makes sense. So I don't see why we wouldn't. Uh, but that is the rankings, or those are the rankings. Now, what I like to do with these rankings is group rank them. So basically, I score all the golfers in, in all of their tee time pairings, uh, whatever their rankings are, and then I rank them from top to bottom. The first six groups, I call my marquee tee times. Now, in the past, what I've done is I actually go and I calculate every single one, and if they're under a, a certain point threshold, they would be considered a marquee tee time. So I say the top six, well, there are seven groups that are actually under that point threshold. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it six or I'm going to call it seven this week. We have seven marquee tee times. And like I was talking about right before jumping into the rankings, you want to find two to four golfers from the tee times that I've just, um, I've just highlighted. So you can see the group ranks over here. And again, you can follow along with me on the cheat sheet. You can go ahead and filter out by group rank or not filter out by sort by group rank. Um, and my rules are find two to four golfers from the highlighted golfers and never select someone from the same group. Now, I shouldn't say never, but I highly, highly recommend against it. Primarily because um, dating back to the PGA Championship of last year, so I think we're over 60 weeks now, um, I think it's only happened four times where a golfer from the same group was in the optimal lineup, or two golfers from the same group were in the optimal lineup. So just for, for an example, Hideki Matsuyama, Sung JM, and Tom Hoagie are all paired together. Very infrequently, does like Hideki Matsuyama and Tom Hoagie finish inside the optimal lineup. And because that's all that I care about when building lineups is trying to hit the optimal lineup, or at least a realistic optimal lineup. I know some people have issues with chasing the optimal lineup, and I get it. If you follow my rules, you know that I, I don't blindly chase the optimal lineup. I'm very realistic with it. So I'm not going to leave $5,000 on the table if past optimal lineups have shown that you want to leave you know $5,000 on the table. I'm not doing that. I'll never leave more than $1,000 on the table. But based off the bucket system, based off of what we've seen in previous years, I'm still chasing the optimal lineup, and I don't really care. Like, some of these stat guys, the big guys, will tell you not to do something like this, but then they don't provide you any good uh, advice when building your lineups. Yeah, find all the great approach players. Okay, cool. Well, inside the top 10, most of the time, you find six good approach players and four really bad approach players. And those four bad approach players are in the optimal lineup or in the end or in the GPP winning lineup. So if you want to win a GPP, you shouldn't follow what those people are saying. Sure, their correlated stats throughout the whole year or, or uh, for a particular event makes sense. But guess what? You don't want to own anybody between 20th and 60th place. And those are golfers that are going to improve whatever uh, narrative they're trying to preach to you. I only care about optimal lineups. I only care about top tens because there are patterns within those top tens. There are patterns within those optimal lineups that you have to bridge the gap of why would I want to play that gol golfer to, oh, maybe I should include that golfer. You need to bridge that gap because that's how you win GPPs. That's how you hit the optimal lineup. Again, that's what I'm, I'm into. Let, let's try to be as perfect as possible. The pursuit of perfection. So anyways, two, don't pair two golfers up in a group because the, the likelihood of that being the optimal lineup, very low. The likelihood of that being the GPP winning lineup, pretty low as well. Now, it happens more often than being the optimal lineup, but it's still under 10%, which if you just play your odds, you know you don't want to do that. And over the last 60 weeks, you know, in the optimal lineup, it's only happened like four or five times. So that's less than 5%. Well, I'm not doing my math. That's not less than 5%. That's around probably 10%, right? 
a little, little under 10%. Um, but still, play your odds. Choose, you know, two golfers from, from all the highlighted tee times that I have. So if you like Hideki Matsuyama, try to stay away from Tom Hoagie. And instead, you could, I mean, you could pair him up with Davis Riley. That's a solid start right from the beginning. Uh, same applies for like, you know, if you do like Tom Hoagie. So here, here's one uh, piece of advice that I gave uh, Chad Eckert when he was on the pod last week for the Open. Sometimes I look at some of uh, these groups and I'm like, you know what? I like everybody in this group. Like I like, I like Matsuyama. I like Sung JM and I like Tom Hoagie. So I'm not going to anchor any of my golf, like any of my lineups around those guys. I'm going to leave this, this group open and I'll look at the next one and I'm like, you know what? I like Tony Finau and I like Davis Riley. I don't want to anchor around any of these guys. I mean, I'll, I'm never going to play Jason day. I know that for sure. So I'm not going to anchor around these two groups. So like I, I'll look and I'll, and I'm, I'll think to myself, well, who do I want to anchor around? And usually I, I do find one golfer that I do want to anchor around and it's usually in the 10k range sometimes it's in the 9k range but i guess if i'm being honest it's hideki or sungjae for me i'm gonna start there and that means i can't play tony finau and because i'm not playing jason day i'm probably gonna anchor around davis riley so i really like hideki probably play hideki probably play davis riley um but you know if we want to use patterns as a reason to pick players, a lot of these optimal lineups find golfers in like this group three and like group six or seven. So you could probably start with like maybe a Cameron Davis or a JT Poston and pair them up with like a Cameron Chang. And you could go from there and then fade everyone else, which would be very difficult to do because you got a lot of 10K and 9K golfers up here. You wouldn't be filling out. Um, your your roster or your remaining salary which would be very difficult when building lineups but i think that's it I, i'm not going to talk more about marquee tea times we can just kind of shorten this up as, as much as we possibly can again pick two to four golfers from here uh and move on you can exclude the rest of the golfers so if you're hand building you can just remove that now the optimizer does provide that i do have that in here so I have this little group box here and I'm, I'm telling it to select at least two. That's where this minimum column comes in and at, and no more than four. So basically what I'm telling you is don't, you know, select somewhere between two to four, the optimizer already does it. And it's choosing between all the golfers in the marquee tee times, as well as, uh, these, these other groups right here, which I would consider the honorable mentions. So it does consider them as well. That's another good reason to use the optimizer. Uh, but let's move on. Let's go into the buckets. I think that, uh, yeah, let's go into the buckets. And I'm actually going to start somewhere different. Uh, actually, before we get in the buckets, because we're going to go with salaries. So if you want to get a head start on this, um, go ahead and, and, and select the bucket system filter it, within the bucket system um, tab on the cheat sheet and then go to bucket go to clear and let's just look at the salaries uh and we're gonna go into past optimal lineups first and then we'll come to salaries so you can't follow along with me on this one because it's just on my spreadsheets but let's go ahead and talk about this so in 2019 your optimal lineup left 2500 dollars on the table like i said before getting into all of this, when I was talking about the marquee tee times, I'm not going to leave a lot of money on the table. Despite it saying $2,500 you leave on the table, I'm not going to do that. But if you want to, if you want to know, this optimal lineup had Bryson at $10,000 on it, Matthew Wolf at seven, Morikawa at seven, Hadwin at eight, Wyndham Clark at seven, and Carlos Ortiz at six. Now, in previous podcasts, I think if you go to the Fantasy Golf Pod. Uh, YouTube page and you look at the fantasy golf guys Chad and I did a do and don't when making PGA lineups or the do's and don'ts of, of making PGA lineups and I always say this in all my videos I like to start with a 10 9 8 7 7 6 just template of builds well we have Bryson at 10 
We don't have a 9K, but we do have an 8. 7, 7, 6. So, and I always say you can substitute two salaries, like two salary ranges. So you can go from a 9 to an 8 or a 9 to a 7. And likewise, you can go from a 6 up to a 7 or 6 up to an 8. You know, you can make those, those changes simultaneously, but I wouldn't do anything more than that. So like, we could pretend that that 9K dropped to a 7K to call Morikawa and those rules that I just put in place, actually they follow. Because we still have the 10, 8, 7, 7, 6 foundation. We're just substituting a 9 for another 7 for this optimal lineup. Now, can we find a 9K that would actually fit? We can come down here to Victor Hovland and we actually aren't spending 49,000. This would be 48,700. Um, so what I would actually say is maybe Wyndham Clark goes to Colin Murakawa and that's 49,500. So you could build a lineup like this where Bryson was at 10.5, Hovland was at 9.1, and then Murakawa at 7.9, Matthew Wolf at 7.3, Hadwin at 8.1, and Carl Ortiz at 6. So that's at 10.98776. Hovland finished 13th. I have no idea how many DraftKings points he scored because I obviously didn't keep track of this in 2019 for whatever reason. Um, but I bet you that wins a GPP. Especially when the GPP had those golfers we already talked about. And then somebody down here, Joaquin Neiman at 9,300. And heck, that optimal or the GPP winning lineup, pretty darn close to that 10,98,776. It was uh, Bryson at 10,5, Neiman at 9,3, Morikawa at 7,9, Wolf at 7,3, Clark at 7,1, and Burns at 7,3. That's a pretty solid lineup. Like, that's a, that's a potential lineup. Like you, you're looking at all those are all the young guns that won uh, the quarter arcade back then in 2019. That's 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 crazy. Like uh, pair up all your up and coming golfers. That's who won the 3M Open. Um, yeah, and so that that used 49,400 of the $50,000 salary on DraftKings. I usually like to also look at a realistic lineup, but we already did that, so I'm not gonna show you the golfers that we just talked about. Now in 2020, you left nearly $5,000 on the table for your optimal lineup. Like I told you, I'm not an advocate of that. I, I would not want you to do that. This opens up way too many combinations of lineups. Good luck nailing down the correct one. It's best if you only leave a few hundred dollars on the table at most. Um, I'm okay with leaving up to a thousand, but no more than that. Um, God, this, this $3 birdie winning lineup left $1,900 on the table. That's insane. But optimal lineup or even that $3 winning lineup, the GPP winning lineup, did use Tony Fino at 10.9. So both optimal lineup and the winning lineup. So that's the second year in a row that we've seen a 10K golfer in both the optimal as well as the GPP winning lineup. So it's a good way to, it's a good place to start. But then you have two 7K golfers, flat seven, a 7.5, a 6.7, and a 6.2 in the optimal lineup. Yeah, that's not something I would recommend at all. Um, I do have a realistic optimal, which is using Finau at 10.9. Matthew Wolf at, in 12th place. Now, usually the sweet spot optimal is all six golfers inside the top 10, but there's no way of building this last year, or uh, in 2020, I should say, and using at least $49,000. So we had to drop down to 12th place. That was Matthew Wolf, 97. So Finau, 10. Wolf, 9. Homa, 8. Two 7Ks and a 6. So there you go. There's that 10.98776 build. That used up 49,300. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that would have beat that $3 GPP winning lineup by 30 points. So <clears throat> the $3 birdie was you left $1,900 on the table. That's insane. I don't think anyone... That's crazy that someone had the foresight to do something like that. That's the first time I've actually seen something like that. Um, but moving on to 2021, uh, the optimal lineup left $3,000 on the table or thereabouts. Again, not something I recommend, but it starts with um, a 10K golfer, two 8Ks, two 7s, and a 6. So once again, 
you start with the 10. We're skipping the 9, but we're putting in an 8, two 7s, and a 6. So it still follows that foundational piece that I always talk about, that 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6 start. Obviously, without the 9K, you just include another 7K golfer. Um, excuse me, another 6K golfer, which I wouldn't recommend doing. Uh, your GPP winning lineup, use all $50,000 of the salary. And that included a 10, two sevens, actually call it three sevens, a six, and another 10K golfer. So two 10Ks. And that's really interesting because I was building some lineups before jumping on here. My optimizer wanted me to select a couple 10K golfers. We only have three in the field this week, but it was selecting two of them. It also kind of goes hand in hand with how weak this field is. Um, it, it makes sense. So I, I might not actually be opposed to putting two 10K golfers in a lineup this week. Your realistic lineup, though, did have that 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6. Um, and I believe, let's double check. Realistic score 635, GPP winning lineup score 604. So you could go that 698, 776, or wow, 1098, 776 lineup, uh, or that build, and take down a GPP. So that was your 2019, 2020, and 2021 past optimal lineups and past, it just basically your salary analysis that you need to know before building your lineups this week. Now, when we jump into the buckets, I have projections that I think are going to finish inside the top 10 for each of these salaries. There are only three 10K golfers, and <laughs> the whole process is actually predicting one to three golfers being in the top 10 by the end of the tournament. So I think this just goes to say, start with a 10K golfer. You only have three to choose from, so it should be simple. Choose a 10K golfer and move on from there. Now, the 9K range doesn't look very great. We're really only, there's only four in that bucket. And because the success rate isn't super great, and, and by the way, these projections, I do need to update. Um, take these with a grain of salt this week. I, coming to this, when I was putting everything together, I did not like how any of these projections looked. And they are very reliant on my success rates. I think that's a fool's errand. I need to update how these projections work. But for the most part, I, I would say I have like a 70% uh, confidence rating in these. So not 100, not 90, not 80, but 70. So I, I still feel confident in these projections. Just they need tweaking. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, 9K, I wouldn't play more than one. Uh, in fact, we've never seen one in, inside the top 10. And obviously, we just went through the top 10 of the last three years, and we didn't see one. Now, 8K, we've seen up to two inside the top 10. Um, and I am projecting zero to two inside the top 10 this week. 7K, projecting somewhere between two to five. We've seen five to seven every single year. So 7K range is where it's going to be at. Uh, and then the 6K range, really never select more than two 6K golfers in your lineup, ever. I, I just ever. And never anything lower than 6.5K. I mean, one at most, but never two down in this low 6K range. If you want, mix a high 6K with a low 6K. And go from there. So those are your past optimal lineups and salary buckets. Um, I think the next one that I would want to do is just the strokes game bucket because these are kind of my ancillary buckets, uh, if we want to call them that. The last year, last week, course history and recent form, those are really the, the foundation of the bucket system. Strokes gain might need some tweaking and salaries. I just, there's not enough data really to normalize those stats. So that's why I kind of call these kind of, may, maybe I should call them miscellaneous bucket. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but when it comes to strokes and stats, if you're unfamiliar with how I do these, there's a link in the description that talks about the bucket system. Uh, I would highly suggest you just skip to the strokes gain buckets to understand what they are. If I explain them, it's just going to add five minutes to this video and we don't need to add five minutes to the video. 
But for each of these, and again, this is all part of the, the bucket system, I have all these loaded in, all these projections. Strokes gain one. Everything is positive with strokes gain stats. All stats are positive. We want somewhere between one to three golfers from this bucket in our lineups. There are only six golfers with that bucket assigned to their name. I think that's where we go. Stroke chain two, uh, somewhere between zero to two. Stroke chain three, one to four, which is positive off the tee, negative putting, and whatever stat in between. So this is like your team no putt right here. Um, stroke chain four, negative off the tee, positive putting, somewhere one, between one to three. And then the other two buckets, not super confident in, somewhere between zero to one for each of those. Maybe two golfers for this one, since there are 40 golfers in that bucket this week. It's a pretty high number. It's a very volume-driven. Uh, it'll be a very volume-driven result. I could see two golfers from the stroke chain five bucket inside the top 10, but I'd err on just one. Um... And if you were to go and use the cheat sheet and take a look at all your golfers with these stroke gain stats, remember they're all within these columns here where the, the, the buckets are or whatever stat we're talking about. These golfers are all highlighted. They're all colored by their stroke gain bucket. So your ones, your twos, so on and so forth. That way when you're just looking, you don't necessarily need to know what stroke gain bucket they're in. You can just look at the color. The dark green is obviously strokes gain one. We have two 10K golfers there. B now an M, but I'll let you go. I'll let you guys do your own research. Um, again, we want what somewhere between one to three. Yeah, one to three. Error on on the two and lower side, so two or one, and go from there. That means to me, easy to anchor around Tony Finau or Sung J M, in my opinion. Uh, let's move on. Let's go to our foundational buckets, which we're going to start with our last year buckets. So because this tournament is somewhat new, uh, we have a lot of turnover when it comes to golfers not returning. Uh, if you remember, DJ was at this event a couple of years and then didn't play last year, I, I believe. Um, hard to get golfers to come to this event which is unfortunate. Uh, I think this is the first time it's actually um, followed after a major championship. I think it usually is. No, that's not true. I think this has always been after a major somewhere. Let's take a look. In 2019, US Open. Okay, so it was right before the Open Championship. In 2020, this was once COVID kind of uh, revamp this is right after the memorial so a lot of your big golfers are going to the memorial they're not going to stop at 3m open and then 2021 the open championship proceed or yeah preceded this one that's probably also why you we didn't have any big names here so i think that's why your last year one bucket which usually always has somewhere between like one to three as your projection or zero to two or yeah zero to two is at zero to one um i'm gonna err i'll just project zero to two despite the same zero to one remember we always round down in this bucket we always round up in this one i'm gonna say zero to two last year once and those are your, your top 20 finishes again if you're unfamiliar with the bucket system link in the description below find the video that says basically the bucket system explanation video check that out listen to the first five minutes and you'll get an understanding of what it is um Really, your, your main bucket you're looking at is the did not plays. So all the other buckets are somewhere between 0 to 1, 0 to 2 that you want to select golfers from. Again, use the uh, optimizer to select, select lineups for you based off of these rules. Super simple, but my advice, just never, really never go too, um, too all in on, on, on one bucket or another. Like, you wouldn't want to find... You know, of the 11 golfers that have a top 20 finish here last year, don't pair up more than two of them. You know, you wouldn't want to put three or four of those golfers in your lineup. That's kind of why I go over this bucket system, just to give you some guidelines. Um, I'm not really going to talk about this, this last year bucket. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Again, you can follow along with me in the cheat sheet. Link in the description. 
uh, and go ahead and put these filters on. That way you know which golfers to look at. And then when you're looking at the dream sheet on there, you can also go to these filters, clear them out, and just check out who all your last year one golfers are. And then sort by whatever you want to. Like, if you want to sort by salary, you can. Uh, you want to sort by ranking, you can. You know, it's up to you guys. It's all at your fingertips. But I don't really need to talk to, about last year buckets. We can look at last week buckets, which are including the bar, um, the Barracuda as well as the Open Championship. So if someone's coming over here um, with a top 20 finish, not super great. So I don't think we have anybody from the Open Championship that top 20 last week at this event. Should have Ches Reeve here somewhere. I wonder if he got updated properly. He may not have. Ches Reeve. We have him. Okay, so that's a mistake. So there's an update I have to make. My apologies. I don't know why. All right, so we do have a few top 20 golfers here. I'll have to update this in the, in the cheat sheet, and then also with the projections. There's a few of them, actually. So McNeely, Davis. These guys must all be under the sixes. So something with the spreadsheet just didn't update properly. Hmm. I'll have to look into it. I, I don't know why. I should have spotted this much sooner. Um, but anybody from the open that had a top... No, no one from the open. That's why the buckets are not showing that. Okay. So I'll, I will update this. And I'm sure that this bucket will actually be better. Instead of 0 to 1, it'll probably be 0 to 2, most likely. Um... Yeah, it does show 13. Here, how about this? This will update in real time. So, um, yeah, don't mind me. We'll do this. We'll try to do this as quick as possible. I'd probably put a formula in here to, to do all this. So Maverick McNeely has a ninth place finish. Here, I got a better idea. Screenshot this. Update it over here. Maverick McNeely a one. It's a ninth place finish. Cameron Davis has a sixth place finish. Review first place finish. Hubbard is no longer in the field. Martin Laird has a third place finish. Nick Hardy. 13th place finish. Smotherman with an 8th place finish. That's $7,400. Thompson at $7,300, who is a past champion. Finished 9th. Uh, Lauer at $6,900. A decent name. Someone to consider. Bryce Garnett. Also 16th place. Uh, Harry Higgs, 11th. Good for Harry. Kucheski. And then Joshua Creel. Okay. So, I didn't sort by this. Perfect. And I believe that should update this. And it does. There we go. So now it is zero to two. Simple as that. Um, sorry for that taking a little bit, but we got there. So zero to two, that does take away from some of these other buckets, which is 
interesting. Um, I'm gonna have to go through and actually update all of these, but yeah, this is this is much better to look at. I'm sure this bucket will actually be closer to one to three. Um, these ones are gonna be taken from the most, and it's probably gonna be this one really that did not plays. So I'm gonna say it's zero to two for most of these, and then a missed cut or just not playing last week. Actually, those those are good too. You want to select one to three from each of those because I don't think these are going to change. They're going to be very much the same. Uh, I'm not going to take enough golfers out of any of these buckets to really make a huge impact. So yeah, it'll be one to three um, for these two. So these are really the only ones you want to make sure you select at least one golfer from. And then going to course history. Um, having good course history actually is kind of a big one here. Now, usually I always update this, like I always round up. So it'd be one to four. Because even if this was like, oh, it is 2.99. So it is one to three. Perfect. We'll keep it one to three. Because I was just going to tell you guys, I'd still want it one to three. Uh, and there's actually one piece that I want to show you guys. Um, sure. Uh, I included this kind of miscellaneous information. I want to know who's over $8,300 or I want to know which bucket averages over $8,300 and if that's 50% of the bucket or more. If it is, I will round down one full place. So this is actually zero to three course history ones. Primarily because when this is too expensive, they might not return value, but I think I think we just keep it one to three. If I'm being honest, because of how bad this field is, probably makes sense. Just keep it one to three. Uh, course history two and three. Usually these are buckets you want to select golfers from, but for this tournament, not so much. Course history four, maybe one to three of those golfers you want in your lineup. Zero to one course history five, one to three course history sixes. Um, yeah, nothing more to talk about there. And then our last one, recent form buckets. We have two golfers with really good recent form. Select one of them. Is zero to one of them, I should say. Uh, but, but not both. Recent form two. A bucket that I could get behind, one to three. Recent form three, one to three golfers from there as well. Uh, recent form fours. Now this is where most of our golfers are from, or you know are in, I should say. And that's two to four. So never, don't pick more than four, but at least select two. And then read some form five and six, zero to one for each of those. So that wraps up the buckets. Now, if we were to go ahead and look at the anchor buckets for each of these, obviously what I would tell you to do is straight away go to the bucket totals and how many are in this year. Go by filter by condition and say less than or equal to 30. That's just an easier way to find these anchor buckets and then a max projection of we'll put a filter on this as well so filter by condition and we'll go greater than or equal to two and this is usually easier to find the golfers you really want to put in your lineups and i usually always ignore the salaries and strokes gain stats so we stick here with course history there's two buckets you want to select from course history one course history four and then one from recent form two so let's go ahead and just take a look at recent form two and then get into the course history one and four. So we have some names. Finau is up here. So I don't mind anchoring around Finau just because of this. But let's say you like one of these 9K golfers. All four 9K golfers are in this bucket. I don't have an issue with that. I also don't have an issue with some of these 8K golfers or these 7K golfers. Now you want to select somewhere between um, one to three of them. I can make an argument of owning or rostering three guys. I don't mind going Tony Finau at 10-5, Davis Riley at nine, and Adam Svensson at $7,600. I think that's a, a very doable lineup, just to start right there. But I wouldn't select more than that. I wouldn't go more than three. If you like a different 10K golfer, that's fine. Look at how many choices you have in the 9K range, the 8K range, the 7K range. Pretty good. Now, the other anchor buckets that we were just talking about, course history ones. 
we want somewhere between one to three. He now shows up again, but so do the other 10k golfers, Matsuyama and Im. We do see some of the other uh We see some of the other 9k golfers, Hadwin and McNeely. And then we also see uh, uh, Ches Reevee and Adam Svensson. This is a 1-3 to three bucket. So we already saw Finau. We already saw Svensson. And we, bo we both saw Hadwin and McNeely. So maybe that's where we anchor our lineups around. Maybe I'm going to finally anchor around a 7k golfer, despite him being probably 30% owned. Well, if I own them at 90% or even 70%, I'm still going to have leverage on the rest of the field. That's how, how much I'm going to own uh, Adam Svensson. I don't have an issue with that. Now, the other anchor bucket is your course history fours. And it's a bunch of 7Ks and 6Ks. I would never anchor around any of these guys. You have, you have choices. Uh, this bucket says what? One to three. There are 26 golfers in that bucket. On average, we see at least three inside the top 10. That's insane. Um, I don't know how we get there. There are good names. Uh, some names that I don't mind. I, I don't mind playing Stuart Sink. Chess and Adley, that's fine. Uh, probably stay away from Tyler Duncan. He's just burned me so much this year. He's a very inconsistent, very weak player. Doesn't hit the ball far. I just don't see the potential. And Tyler Duncan. He has one on tour, but I just don't see the potential. Um, I actually don't mind going to someone like Bill Haas. Chase Seifert. Uh, I don't mind Peter Melnati, but despite he also doesn't hit the ball very far. Hagee can hit the ball far. I like that. Uh, I just don't care for the rest of these guys. So, there are names. There are names you can select, and, and that's fine. I usually don't own any of the 6k golfers more than 4% in all of my lineups. There are 19 in this bucket that are 6k. Which, I mean, that can create up to 80 lineups, basically. If you were to select 4% of some of these guys, I wouldn't suggest it. Hmm. That's hard. That's a tough decision because I just, I'm not going to Jason Day. I can't. I cannot do it. Meaning these these other five seven k golfers, if I want to select one golfer from this bucket, I'm gonna to have to find probably forty lineups to put these five golfers within. Which if you if you equal it out, that's not terrible. Um, forty lineups split up between five golfers, that's eight percent. I'd have 8% ownership if I were to play these guys, you know, five times each. And then the rest of these at least two to four times. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. But I really don't like this bucket at all. And it's not to say that this bucket can't fail. You know, it could be one of those that gets zero inside the top ten, despite it saying one to three. Really don't like that bucket. Not a, <laughs> Not one that I have a lot of confidence in. So those are your anchor buckets uh, for this week. Let's go ahead and build some lineups. I think we've covered everything I need to. We went over all the buckets, the anchor buckets, pass optimal lineups. Um, yeah, so let's, let's build a couple lineups here and get out of here. We'll keep it under an hour. Uh, I personally like Tony Fino. We just talked about it. Tony Fino and Svensson seem like golfers to anchor your lineups around. Um, I have all of the rules already in place. Um, I do believe this needs to go up to a two. Uh, no, it was this one. Okay, we're good. We're good. So if I were to lock around Finau and Svensson, my top lineup is Finau, Matsuyama. Remember, we talked about the two 10Ks. Svensson, Sink. Schwab and Hayden Buckley and I don't mind Hayden Buckley Hayden Buckley is a pretty talented golfer um yeah that's pretty fantastic I I did run this optimizer a bunch of times before jumping on and recording this and it did do a lot of these 10ks 
But if I wanted to select a 9k golfer, so if I only let it select one 10k, it will select the 9k golfer and it will most likely be Davis Riley. And I right away get proven wrong. Two AK golfers, Cameron Tringali, Brennan Steele, which Brennan Steele is going to show up a bunch. And I, there's no issue with that. Brennan Steele, I think, is a great play this week. But I don't know if I want to play Cameron Tringali all that much. So we'll, we'll cross him out. Wow. It's crazy. I don't understand why Davis Riley isn't being selected. I, when I was running this before, he was selected a bunch. Uh, yeah, Sahith Tagala. That's the first time I've seen him up here. Maybe it's because I'm locking in Tony Fino. It, that, pos that could possibly be it. Interesting. Okay, so if I lock in Hideki Matsuyama, I bet you Riley gets picked up. There it is. So yeah, I was running this with Matsuyama as my anchor um, before really looking into the, the anchor buckets as well as, you know, marquee tea times and stuff like that. I was going uh, Matsuyama pretty hard, and I, I like this. I guess I don't really so much care for Thompson, but these four golfers right here, if you want to do a core four, absolutely love those four golfers together. It's just going to show up a bunch of times. Um, yeah, I'm not going to build any more lineups now. We're going to keep it there. I think Riley, Steele, Svensson, and the pick of Matsuyama or Finau. And if you like Sungjae, then so be it. I know he's, he's, a, he's a good play. I don't mind doing a Sungjae lineup. I guess if I were to throw that in here, let's see who the 9K it takes. Davis Riley. So it almost looks like if it's Finau, it's not Riley. And if it's anybody but Fee now in the 10k range, then it's Riley. Um, but yeah, Brendan Steele shows up a bunch. And yeah, I, I think that's a great play. So that's all that I have for this week. A reminder, if you want a chance to win $20, be subscribed. Comment down below. And if you're not on Price Picks yet, you, you, if you sign up using the promo code SweetSpot, put $20 in your account, I'm going to give you your $20 back. So... Simple as that. It's a good way to play it for free. Plus, prize picks will match your initial deposit up to $100. So if you want it only to be $20, bucks, you get to play with $40 for free. Or go ahead and put $100 bucks in there. They'll match it. You'll have $200 to your account. And it'll only cost you $80 when all the dust has settled. And of course, the cheat sheet, link in the description. Hopefully, you listened to me throughout this video, remind you that it was available, uh, and also the optimizer that we just ran, that is also available. You gotta be subscribed to this channel. Comment down below, and then email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com to get access to it. But that is all that I have for you guys, so thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.